Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to Photo Show. Modern DSLR cameras are getting more and more complicated. There's all more buttons and dials and functions with each model that comes out. It can be quite confusing to know exactly what these buttons and dials do, but luckily they give you a nice big fat user guide. But to be honest, it's not exactly bedtime reading. I've read all the way through this one and the story is not great, but it does at least explain things as it goes along. What I thought I'd do is I'd put together a user guide using the Nikon D7100 as an example, showing you exactly what the buttons, switches and functions do around the camera. Remember, if you like what you see on the photo show, please comment, like and subscribe in the boxes below. Here's the video. Right, so what we've got here is a Nikon D7100, and like all modern DLSRs, um, there's an awful lot of buttons and functions on these. A lot of which you'll probably never use, but it's a really good idea to know what the buttons do, what the functions do, and how you can set your camera up to use them. So let's start very simply by looking at the top of the camera here. And here you've got your shutter button, and around the outside of it there's a collar, and you can see at the moment it's set on off. If you move the collar around to on, and you can see now there's power in the camera, and it's lit up the function screen here. And this is showing you a bunch of information about the camera. You've got your uh, shutter speed there, which you can see on that is a 60th of a second. You've got your aperture there, which is set at f5.6 on this at the moment. Below this, you've got a frame counter, which is going to show you how many frames you've got left on your SD card. That's obviously going to depend on the size of the card and the quality that you're shooting at. This figure can also be changed in the menu to display the um, ISO setting rather than the frame rate. So that's with the camera on. Uh, you've got your shutter button, which obviously when you push and fire will fire the camera and take a frame like that. Um, and like all uh, DLSRs and cameras, if you half push the button, if you can see the lens there, it will actually start to focus the lens. So by half pushing the button, that'll set your autofocus and then push it all the way down and you've got your frame taken. Right, so what other buttons have we got here? In addition to the on switch there, there's a one further stage round you can see there, and this little light bulb setting. And if you flick that round, you can see now that the screen is lit up with a green light below it. So if you're in low light and you can't see the screen properly and you want to check your settings, just flick that across one more stage and it will light up in a nice glowing green light and you can see all of your details. So let's turn that off again. Okay, other buttons here. This button here is your exposure compensation button. So by holding that down, you can now see that the exposure compensation is set to zero, zero. And on the back of the camera here, you've got your command dial, which sits nicely where your thumb is. So if you hold that down and rotate the command dial, you can start to adjust your exposure compensation. I believe it's up to three stops. No, it's more than that. And you can go down the other way into the minuses as well. So let's put that back on zero. Um, next button across here with the little red dot on it is your video record button. So when you're in video mode, you push that to start recording and you'll push that to stop recording. Very simple, not much else to that at all. The next button here is your metering modes. And um, if I hold that down and we watch the screen, it's now displaying what the metering mode is. I'm now using my thumb on the command dial at the background. So that at the moment is set on matrix metering. That's spot metering, which is just the very, very center of the uh, screen. That's center weighted. And one more turn and we're back to matrix metering. So that's how you set your uh, metering modes. Just hold the button down, rotate the command dial, and that's going to set your metering modes. Okay, so that's that part of the camera taken care of. On the back here, where your thumb sits when you're holding it naturally, is your command dial. And this is where you'll scroll through your commands um, when you're in menu settings. When you're working, if we watch the uh, shutter speed now, the back dial will control your shutter speed. So as I rotate that, it's climbing up the shutter speed settings. If I turn it the other way, it's going back down. Around the front, 
you've got what's called your sub control dial and this sits with your forefinger so you've got your shutter there and you just forefinger there for the sub control and in normal shooting mode this will control your aperture so on 5.6 as we rotate that you'll start to scroll up the aperture settings so between these two dials and your shutter speed you've got control over your shutter speed at the back your aperture at the front and your shutter release there so basically once you're holding the camera your thumb controls the command dial on the back your forefinger controls the command dial on the front and dances between that and your shutter okay that's that side taken care of let's move across to the center and here we've got your hot shoe fitting and this is for um, adding a speed light a flash gun onto it the little silver markers are how the contacts contact and um, talk to the camera you can also use this for a um, remote controller for a flash gun or adding an additional microphone for when you're shooting video above that you have your two microphone inputs for when you're shooting video so you've got stereo left and right microphone um, for recording the stereo sound on your video and now let's move across to what's probably the main event really here is your main function dial and you can see it's got various markings around it we have M for manual A for aperture priority and in aperture priority let's put it into aperture priority for it so to control this dial you push the button on the top and turn it round and it will go all the way round as long as you're holding the dial when you let go it's locked in the place you are so let's pop that onto aperture priority and what happens now when you're in aperture priority is it will stay at the aperture that you've set so it's set at 5.6 at the moment and you can see that because in this light that's given us a fifth of a second for the shutter speed so the aperture will remain fixed in aperture priority and the shutter speed will adjust automatically to allow you to use that aperture if I adjust the aperture down you can see now that the shutter speed is changing automatically I'm not using my thumb on the back dial as I open it up you can see the shutter speed has opened the camera right up so the aperture at 2.8 is in this light which is very low is going to give you um, 20th of a second shutter speed so that's your aperture priority let's put that back up to there next around on the dial the S hold it down turn it around this now stands for shutter priority and what this is going to do is the opposite of aperture priority it's going to fix the shutter speed for you so if we look at the dial again you can see now because it's on the 60th of a second shutter speed that's flashing because it's too low a light situation so if I take the shutter speed down you can see now that it's at 2.8 and as I lower the shutter speed it will automatically I'm not using the front button as I lower the shutter speed it will automatically change the aperture value for me because what it's doing it's fixing the shutter speed so if you if you know that you're short, shooting sport and you need it to be at 500th of a second shutter speed you can keep it on shutter priority and the camera will stay at 500th of a second and adjust the aperture automatically for you okay next okay so that's shutter priority next round we have a P which stands for program mode let's flick that round to there and program mode is uh, like an auto mode it will take care of the shutter speed and the aperture for you but you can also adjust that by rotating if you rotate your dial to the right it will adjust the shutter speed if you rotate it to the left it will adjust the aperture so you can uh, you've although it's an automatic mode you've got control over your shutter speed and your aperture that way next round we have auto which by its very definition will take care of everything for you that will take care of your shutter speed your aperture 
um, pending what your ISO is, you can uh, you can set it to do an auto ISO as well, but it will take care of all of your settings. So basically, if you just want to use the camera like a point and shoot, pick it up, push the button, take a photograph. That's what auto is for there. The next so next round from auto mode is auto with no flash. Um, on the auto mode, if you're in low light, it will automatically pop the uh, flash up on the top here to light up your image. This prevents that from happening, so you're just shooting in available light, but it will give you all of your automatic settings. It will set the shutter speed, it will set the aperture for you. Next round on the dial, we have scene. And scene is a bunch of different looks that will um, automatically adjust the camera for you. There's portrait, there's landscape, there's night shots, and basically, so in the portrait setting, it will shut set a, um, a nice wide aperture to give you a short depth of field. Uh, in the landscape setting, it will set a smaller aperture to give you a deeper depth of field. It's also got settings for sport, so that will control, uh, keep it at a faster shutter speed so you can freeze the action. So there's a bunch of that. We'll look at the scene settings in another episode of the user guide. Um, but that's wh that's where you'll set your scene. So they're like um, auto settings, but they have uh, an amount of customization for different image looks. Next up, we have U1 and U2. And these are um, user settings. So you can, if you have a, a setting that you know you use for a certain subject or a certain way of working, I've got U1 set up if I'm shooting video with this camera. Um, so it will automatically set up for shooting on video. Uh, as you can see there, it's changed. Let's go from scene. So scenes there, as I change to auto, it's changed the white balance for me because I have a set white balance for it. It's changed the aperture and the um, shutter speed as well. Because I've got this set for when I'm recording video on the camera. Um, you could also then got a, a second user setting so you can set two sets of customized um, settings for different things that you like. And finally, on the dial here, we have effects. Now, effects is probably something you, you won't use, but it will give your images a, a bunch of different looks. It can um, make it look like a sketch. It can make it look like it was shot in night vision. Um, it can give a, a, a tilt shift effect, give that, um, make it look like it's a model village. So there's a bunch of different effects in there that you can set from the menu if you're set on the effect setting. So I'm going to come back round and put the camera back to manual. And like I said, manual is obviously you are controlling everything that you can. Okay, so that's the top dial there. Underneath the top dial, we have a secondary dial. And that has a release button here for you to twist and use. So you push that button there and you twist that there. So top dial, you've got the top button there, you push and twist. Bottom dial there, you've got a little button there, and now you can twist the secondary dial underneath. So what have we got here? S, that stands for single shot. So when you take an image on that, so we can get it to do it, it will take a single shot. Next round, you have CL which stands for continuous low. Now you can set this to how many shots that you want. I think I've set the continuous low to be three shots a second. So when you fire the shutter now, it will continuously fire. Next round is continuous high. And the highest on the DX setting on this camera, the highest frame rate is six frames a second. So if I fire that now, you can see that the camera fires off in rapid succession. The next one round is Q, and this stands for quiet mode. Now if we fire this off now, you can hear it's actually a lot quieter than in normal mode. Let's put it back to single shot. So this is the camera firing in normal mode. Like that, and we come round in quiet mode, so Q. And it's a lot quieter. It's it's quieter, but it does seem to take longer. It does seem like there's there's more noise happening. The the single shot seems to happen quite quickly. Um, but there's a quiet mode. Next round on the dial here is your 
self timer. So if you want to um, set the self timer and you've got a variety of different settings from a, a second through, you, you set the amount of time that you want it to delay, press the shutter. So let's try this again. Press the shutter. The camera is now going to wait for 10 seconds, then fire the shutter. And there we go. So that's fired the shutter there. And lastly on this dial is mirror up. And what this does, this pulls the um, shutter mirror up out of the way so that if you're taking things like um, astral photography, star photography and stuff like that, the mirror's out of the way and the movement of the mirror doesn't affect, um, cause any vibrations within the camera to uh, spoil the image. So let's put this back on single shot. And that's the two main dials on the top there. Um, let's come around now to the front of the camera. So let's spin around here and we'll come around to this side first. So on the top here is your little flash button. And if you push that, that will lift up the little flash gun that's on with the camera. And if we fire that now, we get a massive flash. Um, you can also hold this button in and use your command dials to uh, dial in a flash compensation to plus or minus the, the power of the flash if you want to balance the flash up with daylight. So if we hold that down there, if we hold this button here on the f there and look at the command at the top, we've now got a compensation to change the type of flash there. Um, in fact, what happens here, let's push it again. The back dial will change the flash type. You can see there that it's nothing set. As I rotate that around, it now says rear, and that stands for rear curtain flash sync, which means when you push the flash now, instead of the flash going off the, the second the shutter opens, it will go off as the shutter closes. We'll explain what that's for another time. Uh, rotate that round, you've got a red eye setting which will fire a, a short flash before the shutter goes off to close down people's eyes to prevent red eye. And then back to where we were, and if you use the front dial while holding that button down, you've got a flash compensation to increase or decrease the power of the flash to allow you to balance it up with ambient light as required. So that's the flash button there. Next one down is your bracketing button. And what this allows you to do is to take a series of shots at various settings. So it will take, let, let's say it's set, let's push the bracketing button there. And at the moment it's off. So if I turn that to that, that's going to give us three frames. Um, and what it will do, it will shoot one frame at the correct aperture, one frame a stop below that and one frame a stop above that. So you'll have three shots, one um, exposed as the meter's reading it, one slightly underexposed and one slightly overexposed. So you've got three shots to choose from and if you want to do things like um, HDR photography and blend those together, you've got three shots um, that you can use for that. Next button down, this is your button for removing the lens. So you push that down, you see there's a white dot between the two and this is the point um, where your lens, where you line up your lens to come on and off. So if I hold that button down and rotate the lens round, as I rotate the lens round, you can see there's a white dot on the lens. As those two line up, the lens will come away from the camera. And when you put your lens on the camera, line the two dots up, rotate the lens away from you until you hear it click, and it's back on. So let's do it one more time. Hold the button down, rotate the lens, so the two white dots line up, remove the lens, put the lens back on, wind it back till the lens clicks. Like that. So that's what that button's for. Next we have your focus control. And you've got a straight switch here between AF for autofocus or switch it across for manual focus. When it's in autofocus, as you press the shutter, you can hear the lens trying to focus there. If I bring it across to manual focus, when I push the shutter, 
nothing happens because you're going to have to use your focusing ring on the lens to focus manually. Let's put it back to AF. There's also a button here. And this is where you change your um, autofocus points. Uh, if you, at the moment, let's push the button down. Okay. If I hold this, I'm holding the autofocus button there, and we'll look at the top here. At the moment, I've got this set in autofocus single. But while holding that button down, if I rotate that, it's now set in autofocus continuous. And you can see at the top, it's saying it's giving me 21 autofocus points. While I'm holding that now, if I rotate that, that's now gone up to 51 autofocus points. And this will rotate through the various focal points that you have available to you. You can also rotate that around again to auto. And we'll go back to single autofocus points. So that's what that's for. We'll have a look through the uh, viewfinder as well, and that should hopefully show the different autofocus points there. Next up on this side of the camera, you've got your um, input ports. Uh, and what they've done this time is, at one time, the older Nikons used to be one big rubber door, but they're now all individual little rubber doors that open up. So you don't have to open everything, expose everything if you just want to use one part. So let's start at the top there, shut those two back up. Top one here, you can see mic and USB. So first port there is for inputting external microphone for any recording video. And the second port there is your micro USB input for uh, connecting the lead, uh, the camera directly to the computer. Um, so we've got that there, and you close the little rubber door as well. These are weather sealed, so it stops water getting into it. Next one down, as you see on it, is HDMI. So that's your HDMI socket. So you can plug the camera straight into um, uh, HDMI socket on a TV and watch the video directly from it, or um, output to a external video recording device um, straight out of the HDMI slot into the uh, device to record your video. And at the bottom here, we've got headphones and GPS. And so you've got standard headphone socket for um, putting headphones in so you can monitor the recording level when you're recording video. And another little slot there there's an external um, piece that you can buy that will plug into there and give you GPS settings for the camera. So that's that side done. Let's swing around to the other side of the camera now. And I don't know how well we can see this. Right. Just inside here is what's called your preview button. And if you're holding the camera, that sits nicely just where your finger is, so you, where you, your finger can come down there. It says PV on it, and that's your um, aperture preview button. Uh, if you push that, if you push that when you're looking through the viewfinder, it will close the aperture down to give you an idea of what the depth of field is going to look like within your shot. Without that push down, you're just going to see a 100% sharp image. You're not going to see the depth of field. But by pushing that button down, it closes the aperture down in the lens and allows you to see what the depth of field is going to look like in your image. So coming around below that, you've got your function button. It's marked with the FN. And you can see the way that it sits, it's very easy to operate. You can operate it with your middle finger. And by default on the D7100, this will scroll between the using the full size of the sensor and the additional crop mode that is offered. So it, by pushing that, it will go from using the full part of the sensor to using a smaller area of the sensor. You can actually use it like almost like a fake zoom. Um, if you're on a long lens and you want a little bit of extra reach on it, by pushing that button, because you're using a smaller size of the sensor, it will give a little bit of extra reach on the lens. It will lessen the quality of the image because you're using a smaller uh, part of the sensor but you can use it like that so by pushing that button it scrolls between using the full DX size of the sensor to the additional crop size that's offered. Uh, th this button is also uh, customizable both this and the preview button can be customized within the menu to operate different uh, systems within the camera but by default uh, the PV button is set to be your aperture preview button and the FN button is set to scroll between the crop 
uh, full size of the sensor and the additional crop mode. Let's move on to the back of the camera. Okay, so again, looking over at this side, you've got your command dial here, which we've already looked at, and that explains that you can scroll through different functions um, depending on your settings. Uh, the main function for it is your shutter speed. As you can see there, as I scroll it, it's scrolling up and down the shutter speed settings, and that's what that does. So that this sits nicely where your thumb is, when you're holding the camera properly, your thumb works that, your forefinger works the front dial. Next button along here is your um, exposure lock and autofocus lock, also sometimes known as the back focus button. Um, what this will do is when your uh, focus point is set, if you hold that in, it will lock that focus point. So if you're in low light and you're finding that the camera is searching for focus all the time, if you can set the focus point, on something um, in the area you want to shoot, hold that button in. Now your shutter button will work purely as a shutter button. It's not controlling the autofocus at all. Your focus is locked in and will fire every time. It's not going to search for it. It's locked the focus in there. Um, next little dial here, next to this is so you've got your viewfinder here, where obviously you look through to take any images, and you've got a little di dial here, which is called your uh, dioptic adjustment. If you wear glasses when you're uh, photographing, you're going to look through the screen and it's probably not going to be in focus. But by using this dial, you can adjust the focus of the viewfinder to adapt to any uh, spectacles or glasses or um, contact lenses that you might wear. Next on this side is your um, function wheel. It's a multi-point touchpad. So when you're in menu settings, let's put the menu settings on. This is what allows you to scroll up and down your menu settings or across or back or right the way across. So that works that. And then you have the OK button in the, in the center to assign whatever menu point you've set up. Um, so if we were going to delete images you press ok it then asks you and you can go on from there um, to select the points you want let's take the menu off there underneath that is your live view button and this will give you as the name suggests a live view so if you push that in you can now see that the back of the camera is lit up and as opposed to using the viewfinder above you're now using the screen on the back of the camera as your live view. Um, you can also now, with the function, well, this red square in the middle is giving you a focus point, and by using the function settings, you can adjust to where your focus point is needed. So let's put that back in the center there. It's got that side there. So that's giving you the live view. Um, you can also switch it across between being for still shooting or video shooting. Uh, for video shooting on this camera, especially, it's got to be in the um, live view. So, as well as that, when you're in live view, you've now got a bunch of information across the bottom. You've got your metering setting, so we can change the metering setting. If I hold the metering button down, you can see that turns yellow on the screen, and by rotating, it will rotate through your various metering settings again. Um, you could then also adjust your shutter speed or your aperture. And then you've got your ISO settings and your frame count as well. Next button down is your info button. And by pushing this in live view, it's, it's the way this is set up, this has brought out the um, level meter. So it'll show you when you're level. Let's take that off and let's take this out of live view and I think by pushing the info button when it's not in live view there we go that's now giving us a whole bunch of information about the camera um, similar to the screen on the top except you're now getting a lot more information about this put that back on so let's drop our shutter speed down again
So now we've got displaying the mode that the camera's in, the um, shooting type, which is single shot, your shutter speed, your aperture. You've got a metering range there. So as you can see, you can go to the plus and the minus. So you've got your metering range there. It's got your metering type for matrix there. It's also got your metering points, uh, your focus at autofocus points, so you can tell which point. Battery information, um, shot count, ISO settings, white balance settings, quality settings. So it's given all that information. Then at the bottom, you've also got another bunch of information, uh, the settings of the camera. Uh, saying it's in di uh, so here it's telling you what crop mode it's in, um, the ISO noise reduction, so it's not staying on very long here. Um, multi shooting, HDR, um, what the PV button on the front is set to, saying aperture, what the FN button, as we were saying, it switches between the DX and the extra crop mode, um, what the back focus button does, uh, the button at the top here. Let's go again. And we're showing the picture profile side, the noise reduction, and the fact that your remote control isn't attached to the camera. And a whole bunch of information there just by pressing the info button there. But that varies, as you can see, between uh, if it's in live mode, you're getting not only the live view uh, and the information, but between that, it will toggle between various settings. So um, if it's in live view and you're pressing the info button, you've got that with some basic information, that with nothing by the uh, settings at the bottom, that will give you a grid setup to frame your shots, that'll give you your level, and then we're back to where we started. Okay, coming across the other side now, let's take the info off and take the live view out. Okay, so at the top here we have play button. Push that, and it will display the last image taken. Uh, so you've got your image displayed on the top of the screen there with some basic information. And depending on your settings, if you have the image up and you start to use your uh, control wheel there, it will scroll through histograms, um, basic settings and uh, a basic histogram, back to the ordinary image, and the image with some detail. So it'll give you the, the uh, size of the frame, the shot number, the type of image it was. Um, again, you've got histograms for your basic histogram, the red, green, and blue channels as well. And the com combination of the two there. Also, let's go there. Next to that, we have a um, trash can button, dustbin, which you, is your delete. If you want to delete a single file, you can push that and delete the file as long as you go. Next down is your menu button, and this gives you access to all of the menus within the camera. I'm not gonna go through this, because if you wanna have a look, there's a separate video where I did an initial setup on this camera and went through basically all of the menu items there. So this is where you go in using your scroll wheel again here to set up different areas of your camera as you want them. Next up here, um, is your lock and question mark. So let's, um, so you can push that and it will protect your image. It will lock the image um, and they'll protect and remove. So if, if you want to delete a card but you want to make sure an image is safe, press the little key icon and that will protect the image so that even if you uh, delete the card, that image will stay on there there. Also, you can see there, it has a little WB. So all of these buttons are multifunction. If they've got more than one symbol and more than one uh, option near them, then they operate as two ways. And you can see on this button as well, it has WB, which stands for white balance. So if we hold that down there, and now look at the top of the screen, adjusting the control dial, we can now scroll through various white balance options. There we're on um, A for auto, uh, incandescent light, fluorescent light, sunlight, flashlight, cloudy situations, um, nighttime, and um, 
uh, custom settings there and you can also save custom settings uh, as you wish so by holding the WB button and using the scroll you can scroll through the white balance options next down is the little uh, magnifying glass with a plus on it and we'll show you what that's for if you have an image up to display there and you press the little plus button you can zoom in on the image to check the quality and once you're in that as well you can then use the function button here to scroll up and around so you can have a really good close-in look at what you've shot and conversely the button below has a minus which will take you back out to your original size in addition to the um, magnification you can see it also says quality uh, on there so once again you can hold that down look at your top of the screen and now we can adjust the quality of the image at the moment it's on fine so it says large fine for JPEG if you rotate the button you go down through normal basic and you come the other way and you're getting into raw raw plus basic raw plus normal raw plus fine basic and that's how you set the quality for the type of files you want to shoot um, next down as we've already looked at part of is the um, ISO uh, is the um, magnification button uh, and what this will do as well, as well as uh, if you've scrolled in on an image allowing you to back out, if it's already backed out at the maximum size, if you push that, it will give you various views of how you can view your file. So there's four on a page, there's, uh, what have we got there, nine on a page, all of the images that you've got on your card, date settings, and this will scroll through a variety of different options with that. So let's back out of that coming back away using the plus button to bring us back to the full screen image and again you can see that we have another fun double function here and that says ISO so if we hold that down and check the top you can see as I hold it down it's now showing that the ISO is on 320 and as I scroll the command dial we're changing our ISO settings from the lowest there at 100 you can come right the way through to the various ISO settings and finally the last button we have here is the info button and basically this is kind of like a um, user manual within the camera this will tell you what each of these little areas stand for so that's that's telling you that the, the DX setting there stands for the image area that's telling you that it's uh, the next one along stands for the high ISO noise reduction uh, that's standing for the uh, active delighting. That's telling you that the high dynamic range settings are off. That's telling you uh, this is how you also set your um, buttons to assign for something. So that, that's if you want to reset your P, your preview button. Uh, again, for the function button on the front, FN. And it, but it, it's also giving you a little walkthrough. You've got a little diagram there. You can see that's highlighted the. Um, FN but the function button on the front there if I go back up it's highlighted the little PV button there so it's basically like a manual within the camera for you to check the settings uh, there again you can assign what the uh, AF button does on the top uh, that's to set your picture control settings I've got it set on standard at the moment but you can scroll through and change those as you wish uh, long exposure noise reduction that's off at the moment and the remote control so if you've got a remote control setting on there that will show you how that's set up and the functions there uh, and that's basically a rundown of the buttons and the functions on the camera we'll have a closer look at what each of these things do at a various point um, but as a quick overview of the user guide that's the buttons and functions and what they do on the Nikon D7100 um, next time we'll look at the autofocus and points like that so i'm dave vickers thanks for watching see you next time